So let's talk about six myths. So I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking about six myths that I wanted to dispel about artists, about selling art, and the business of art. And then I'm going to talk about six things that all of you, actionable things that all of you can go back home and do uh, yourselves. None of these things are going to be expensive or time consuming, yes, but not expensive. So uh, myth one, you have to sell out to become a wealthy artist. I hear that term all the time. Uh, oh, that would be selling out if I, if I did this. It would be selling out if I did that. The reality is, as artists, you are a business. You are a brand. And marketing is as much a part of selling toothpaste as it is selling art in many ways. And I'll talk about that. But to make money in art is not selling out. And unfortunately, many artists feel that way. And I hope to, dismi I hope to dismiss that myth with some of the things we're going to talk about today. Myth two, I need an agent or gallery to sign me up before I can sell my art. I'm not saying that the art gallery is dead. It's not. It will forever be a part of our, of our, of our fabric of selling art and of our culture. When you're buying an expensive oil painting or an investment piece, you're going to want to see it in person and maybe talk to an art expert before purchasing. But more than ever, and this is what's so exciting, is the power has been shifted away from the curators, from the gallery owners, from the publishers, from the music execs, from the labels, to the artist. And that's what the internet is enabling. If you look at the publishing industry, now companies like Blurb and Lulu allow you to publish your own book and do a short run of books and be able to sell it. Even if you know, publisher A doesn't want to sign you, you can say to heck with it, I'm going to publish it myself. It's a very empowering thing. And the same thing is happening in the visual arts and in the music industry where with the advent of iTunes and the advent of some of the things I'm going to talk about, the power is being shifted to the artist. Myth three, you have to be a techie to sell art online. Well, um, this is not true anymore either. It's so easy to become involved in social media, set up a website or web blog, and we'll talk about that, that you don't need to know anything about technology, in fact, to begin selling art tomorrow. And that's one of the things I'm going to challenge all of you to do is to literally sell a piece of art next week using some of the things we're going to talk about. Myth four, it's expensive. I need a lot of money to be able to sell my art online. Also false. There's a, a bunch of different tools that we'll talk about that allow you to sell your art inexpensively, even for free, over the internet. Myth five, creating prints of my art will reduce its art and value. Now, this doesn't apply to music as much or script writing or other forms of, uh, of art, but specifically from a visual arts perspective, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to different artists, visual artists, whether it be traditional oil painters or, or, or illustrators, and they're under the perception that, oh, if, if, I, if I take my original artwork and create reproductions of it in order to be able to sell more of them, somehow that's cheapening what you're doing. And that's far from the case, and we'll get into that in a bit. Myth six, if I increase my prices for my artwork, I'll make more money. Um, in fact, it's quite the opposite. You need to be able to have art at different price points for different people to be able to purchase your art. But also, art, like anything else, is supply and demand. Your art's only worth what somebody's willing to pay for it. So we'll talk about how you can reduce the prices of your art without selling out, without cheapening your image, and be able to increase your revenue. Now I'm going to talk about six things that you can all go home or back to the studio and begin doing tomorrow. Okay, so. Rule number one, know thyself. And what I mean by that is understand who you are as an artist. Um, but most importantly, understand who your client is. If you're trying to sell music, art, photography, whatever it is, you need to understand who your client is. It's true. Art is a personal form of expression. And I don't want to take that away from anybody. But if you're looking to sell your art, it helps if you understand who, who will buy your art. Is it a wealthy stockbroker? there's any left in Manhattan, or is it a technology guy that lives in San Jose, is it a lawyer, is it an airport? Understand who you're trying to sell your art to, because then you can do certain interesting things with your artwork. Make art that's remarkable, and you'll notice that I underlined the word remark. Something that's remarkable by definition is something people talk about or make remarks about. In the case of DNA 11, our company that makes art from DNA, well, it's, I humbly like to think it's pretty remarkable. It's the kind of thing you might go home and say, you know, honey, I saw the darnest thing today. This, these guys, these nut jobs, 
are creating art from people's DNA. And you might not like it, you might not buy it, but you will talk about it. And if, if there's one thing that can instill all of you, and it doesn't cost money, is to take your art to another level, whether it's conceptually or visually. Don't, don't have to be gimmicky about it, but to create something that makes people talk about it. And that in itself will be the best form of marketing you could ever have, which is word of mouth. Make great art. At the end of the day, you can go to however number of seminars you want and do any marketing tactics that you wish, but if your art isn't great, if it isn't something that people admire and enjoy, then there's nothing that anybody can do for you. So the only thing you can do is try to be the best artist you can and to be the best at your craft and hope that people like it. Lastly, understand what is your brand. Understand who you are as an individual because at the end of the day you are selling not only yourself but your art and it's in many cases one and the same. Um, so it's all part of that. Okay, go next. Um, this is the big thing um, I really want to talk about. Is, you know, nobody can force you to do this but I'm just recommending highly that you all, whatever your craft, whether it's, it's fine art, photography, uh, or even music is considered. In the case of music, you can offer free download to get people go, get people started, or offer something that somebody can sort of try before they buy. In the case of visual arts, there's been a huge shift in the ability and the technology today, and part of what Canvas Pop does, which is to be able to produce G clays, as they're referred to, or, or reproductions, Canvas prints on, or paper prints. It doesn't matter, but maybe it's a, maybe you take your original art piece and you create a smaller version of it. Maybe it's a limited edition, maybe it's a limited run, or um, some, something, uh, some people have done postcards, something that can get your artwork out there without having to spend $5,000 to, 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 to buy a piece of you or a piece of your art. What that does is essentially starts getting people buying your art pieces and gets the word going. And in the meantime, you don't have to wait to make that big sale. Um, you can sell the reproductions of it. The other thing that's great as an artist, is if you have a fantastic piece of art that you love, and a lot of people have expressed interest in it, and maybe the price point's you know, a little out there. Uh, it's up there, it's five, ten thousand dollars $10,000. Why not create reproductions of that photo, or that art piece, that allow people to buy maybe a smaller run for $500, $200, $300? Something that the average uh, entry-level art buyer, because let's face it, there's a there's 100 times more people out there that can afford $200 than there is $2,000. And then from $2,000, you go up to $10,000 and it drops even more. So there's a, there's a saying that I once heard is the poor sell to the rich and the rich sell to the poor. And what that essentially means is whenever you're selling something very high end to the rich, it's, it's much more difficult. There's far few, fewer, obviously fewer people in that market share. Merchandise, that's my own personal opinion. I never want to see our work, for example, on coffee mugs and mouse pads, but you know, there's an opportunity to do merchandising of that, of that nature as well. Just make sure that it ties back to your brand and to your target audience, because you don't want to damage that. Set up a website. Very simple. Many of you are already there, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but if a website or even a blog, I actually, in the case of an artist, I find a blog is even better because it's short, it's almost like a diary, you can um, just create entries, get people to know you because after all, when somebody's buying your art, they're in a way investing into you. And so a blog is a fantastic way to do that. Um, I personally use WordPress, wordpress.com uh, for, my, uh, for my blog, but there's many, many different software vendors out there that produce blogs. Okay, the, this is the, the main talk today, is getting on social media. Um, so there's several things that all of you should have. Uh, how many of you are on Twitter? If I could just see a show of hands. Great, it's promising. Uh, Facebook? How many of you have a, a fan page or a group for your art? That's excellent, I love to see that. Um, so those are the two main things. If, if anything else, those are the two main things you need to be on in social media as artists. Um, uh, you can also contribute to other blogs if you happen to be a writer um, or if you can write and you can also contribute your artwork to other blogs to share it with other people. It's a great way to build inbound traffic. Uh, finally, um, share. Share your stuff. That's what social media is all about. Sharing your stuff but also sharing other people's stuff and thereby creating a dialogue with your customers and, and building awareness for your art. Setting up an online store, earlier I mentioned that 
There's never been a better time to have art online. Very easily set up a shop. There's Deviant Art, um, which is one of the largest art communities in the world, which is sort of the MySpace of the art world. Also, those guys are friends of mine, and I know them personally. Artist Rising, which is owned by Art.com. So a very large community of artists that have art for sale. Image Kind, which happen to be competitors to a Canvas Pop, but they do have a very good art community. And Etsy, which is the number one marketplace for crafts, arts of all kinds. An am amazing sites that I encourage you to go visit. So Get Ink, what does that mean? Well, that's fancy talk for publicity, really. Getting ink means getting, getting eyeballs. Getting eyeballs means getting attention. Getting attention means getting traffic. Getting traffic means hopefully getting sales. And so, as I mentioned earlier, DNA 11 and even Canvas Pop wouldn't exist in the form that it is today if it wasn't for social media, but also for good old fashioned publicity. But essentially, let's talk about sort of the general rules that, that we operate under. Um, if people don't know you, you can't sell your art. So, and this is gonna maybe upset some people, but I say don't hire a publicist. And I say this through experience. Um, it's different if it's an internal resource or somebody that's part of your team, but PR firms operate on a level where they have many clients and essentially the attention goes to the highest paying client. And um, often the senior partner comes and pitches you on how they can help publicize your art and help get you buzz, but at the end of the day it's a more junior resource that ends up doing the pitching and all the hard work. Guess what? No one can pitch more passionately and with more vigor than you can as the artist. And the journalist wants to talk to you more than to your publicist. They want to understand what you're about, what drives you, what your passion is, and I'm sorry, your publicist or your publicist assistant certainly cannot talk at the same level as you can about your art. So that's uh, something I'm very much against is hiring a publicist, and in fact, and we could talk about this more in the Q&A, it's something that any one of you can do yourselves. It's a very simple process. Um, what's your angle? What do I mean by that is, goes back to your brand. What's your angle? What makes you unique? Why should a journalist care about your art? And that's probably the biggest challenge is discovering what is buzzworthy, what is now about your art, what, why people in the world need to know about your artwork. And understanding that angle is the first key to getting publicity. Pitch the right people at the right publications. That is key as well. You don't want to spam a bunch of journalists or just, you know, knock on the wrong doors. You want to focus your angle and your pitch and your story to the right editor within the newspaper or within uh, the, the news station or whatever you're trying to get onto is understand who you're talking to and what your angle is and you will eventually get ink or publicity. Don't limit yourself geographically. And this is something I see all the time. And this is what this whole talk's about. If one thing we can all take away from this is it's a global marketplace. The art world is a multi-billion dollar marketplace and it's not just locally. You can sell your art anywhere in the world and um, don't limit yourself geograph geographically. And finally, think big. And that ties back to my last point. Um, you know, the more talented an artist is, I've noticed many times, the more humble they are. And it's great to be humble, but at the end of the day, you have to think big and at the beginning, no one's gonna blow your own horn, so to speak. You have to do it. You have to tell people how great your art is and sell your story, not just to the journalists, but eventually to your, to your clients. And thinking big just means dreaming big because when you dream big, it doesn't cost extra money. It just means that you have a big vision and hey, if you only get halfway to that big vision, you're still, you've still been very successful. So that's something I encourage everybody to do.